So I will start with definitions and example, or I should say first uh, I'm sorry. So this is a joint work with uh, Sebastian Swaba and Ki Chung Kim. So I should not forget to mention them. Eh? Okay, so I will start with definition examples and then I will talk about connectivity problems and then um, uh, first I will talk about a question by Andries Brauer and then another conjecture of him and then I give some counterexamples for this conjecture and then some positive results on his conjecture and then um, I'll come back on the first question of him. So. That's where I hope they have time for, uh, if I... Okay, let's start then. Okay, I mean for me, a graph is a simple graph without multiple edges and without loops. So... And so what is this regular graph? Here is, so we take a vertex x. So we have comma one of x, the neighbors. So, so we we look at two vertices. This is i. Then this vertex has certain number of neighbors at distance i minus one some neighbors at distance i and some neighbors at distance i plus one and now what I require is that this number is ci this number is ai and this number is bi that is what and for all i the distance of Okay, that is my requirement for this Rayleigh graph. An example is the dodecahedron. I will draw it like So there are 20 vertices, it's dodecahedron, everybody knows I think. So you take a vertex x and I will say this is a distance 1, these are 3 vertices at distance 1, then there are 6 vertices at distance 2. One of the ones is at distance 2. Okay, I see that this will be a 2 then, no? It was, so. It is better. Okay. I, uh, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this will be three, 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 and three, four, 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 and five. Hmm? So now we uh, we can look at the vertex at distance two, say this one. Then you see there's one vertex at distance one, one vertex at distance two, and one vertex and this is 3. So, so, so you can see that C2 is 1, A2 is 1, and B2 is equal to 1, because there is 1 at distance 3, and 1 at distance 1, and the 1 at distance 2. And that uh, doesn't matter which vertex this is 2, if you take this one, you see the same pattern occurring. And for, say, distance 4, for this one, for example, there is two at distance C4. There's two. There's no vertex at distance 4 from a vertex neighbor. A vertex at distance 4 doesn't have a neighbor at distance 4 from my, my fixed vertex X. So you get this, this kind of pattern. So you see that the, I mean, you can check all the numbers if you want, and you better do it yourself because <coughs> um, it doesn't matter which which vertex distance for you take; it's always the same. So that is, if these numbers are all constant, it only depends on the distance between the two vertices. Then you say distance regular. 
So, so, so we, I will show there are many examples of these Israeli graphs. And so, one of the origins of these Israeli graphs are distance uh, transitive graphs, where you have a transitive group acting on the graph, where if you look at the point stabilizer that acts at distance for every i, transitively on the distance i vertices from this fifth. So, uh, so if I fix the vertex x, then the, the, the automorphism group is for x. So if you have an automorphism group that serves as a point stabilizer, uh, acts, uh, the, the, the acts transitively for f e comma i of x, then you call distance regular, distance transitive. Okay, so why do you the other examples? Yes, uh, I already gave an example the dodecahedron, but the more the, the, uh, the Hamming-Graus examples. So where you now you take an half beta of size q, and two, and the vertex sets are all the factors of length n, with entries in this half bet q, and they differ. And they are adjacent if they differ in exactly one position. Yeah. In other words, if they have Hamming distance one, and and you can easily sh show that the distance in the graph is exactly the Hamming distance. Uh, that means the, if they have two factors have distance i, even only if they differ in exactly i positions. So then you can easily see that the diameter equals to n. So for q equals to 2, you get the n cube. Yeah, so that is uh, everybody knows, and they are distance regular graph. Is ci is i, they are even distance transitive because yeah, uh, you can add yeah. Um, this is the, um, you can easily see that the the group that uh, the group is something like the symmetric group, uh, the width ball uh, read product of the symmetric group it itself. Um, I always get a little bit confused but so you can have uh, the on every position the position can be permuted but on every position you can uh, permute all the elements of the alphabet as well. Yeah and that is the whole group so then you can see that this is a distance transitive action. And why did they study the Hamming graphs? This gives uh, an algebraic framework uh, to study codes, especially bounds on codes. Um, in uh, 1973, they started to give the Dassault linear programming bound, and this was improved by Schreiber, I think, in 2006 or so, uh, using the Tavir algebra of the the cubes, the and the hypercubes. Okay, so so then we have the Johnson graphs. That so the, the, you take a set of of cardinality n, and then you take all the subsets of cardinality t, and then you say two of those subsets. Uh, are adjacent if they um, intersect maximally if they intersect in t minus one vertices and you can easily see that the Johnson graph n t is isomorphic to Johnson graph n n minus t because you can go to the complement easily yeah and the diameter is the minimum of t and n minus t so usually we assume that t is smaller or equal to half n. Yeah. And it is this really graph with uh, ci equal to i squared and and this is an maybe you can use it as a algebraic framework to study uh, design theory. 
so they are also dissociative and uh, the atmospheric microbe is this somatic group on n vertices oh yeah you can easily see that let's see yeah. okay <coughs> The C. Yeah, the C. I this example also DRG with C I equals I. Squared, yes. Okay, I have here C I's. And I can also say the A I's and the B I's, but oh, okay. I just say one of them. I, I mean, the other ones are not so difficult, and that is the B I's I can also easily express if I really want. So most of the known families of distance craft and distance craft come from classical objects, for example. You know, we have a lot of the Hemming graphs we already have seen, the Chonsi graphs. The Krasma graphs is where, for the Chonsi graph you take the subsets of a set. For the Krasma graphs you take the, you take an effector space over a finite field. And then they take the t-dimensional subspaces, and then you you say make them adjacent if they intersect maximally. If the intersection of the two spaces has co-dimension one, and then you have things like the bilinear form graphs, the sesquilinear form graphs, the dual polar graphs, the quadratic form graphs. Uh, do I forget something? And there's quite a few of. Uh, Things come from things that uh, are studied already for a longer time. And so my viewpoint is that this gives a way to study those classical objects from this combinatorial viewpoint. But there are also not so nice distance rate graphs like the dupe graphs, the twisted Krasman graphs, and uh, maybe I already mentioned the quadratic form graph, the Hemeter graphs and the Ustimenko graphs. So I believe there are in total about 13 families known, infinite families. And uh, one question is whether these are, are all the all the families that do exist, we don't know. Uh, that's a big open question. Um, if I, you would have asked me that maybe seven years ago, I would have said yes, it must be. But then somehow there was a family found in 2005. So uh, since then we don't understand, we don't, bl uh, we have no idea what we can expect more. Uh, Are there many sporadic ones? Sporadic examples? Uh, sporadic, there are quite a few, uh, I mean, but low diameter. Yes, I mean, and, uh, really huge ones that you have no idea where this came from. Yes. Okay. I guess it would be hard to find those. It's quite difficult, no? So, what's the largest diameter for sperm? The largest, yeah, I think, what we know, is seven or eight. Yeah, so it must be the Foster graph. Yeah. So what's an example of a distance regular graph that's not distance transitive? Um, the dupe graph. I mean, I can do the Srikanda graph. Srikanda, uh, this is on the torus. So maybe I can check it. At least it is the smallest. So you put it on the torus. And now I get... So. So, so this means maybe that's yeah. This, I mean, you must imagine this on the tour. So, uh, so you go this way and this way here. And this this is the same vertex. This uh, this is associated with this vertex. So uh, that is on the torus and this is a circular graph. Um, so why is it not uh, distance transitive? Because if I fix this vertex, if I look at 
so it is, if I look at y this way and now I should find another vertex uh, where is my other vertex, which one do I want? There's this one, this is this one if I take z yes, uh, so so x, these are, these are the, the, the common neighbors so this is uh, well, I have uh, my letters are not so good um, u and u prime but uh, if I look at the common neighbors of z as u prime and v and u prime and v are not adjacent to each other so but u and u prime are adjacent so in the orbit I, I fix him then they must be in different orbits So that is the easiest example, I think. Uh, okay. So, what is now I should talk about? Strong radial graphs is essentially the same thing as this radial graph, only of diameter 2. But yes, so what we have is every vertex has k neighbors. Every two adjacent vertex are in lambda triangles, and every I take have two vertices not adjacent, and they are have new common neighbors. But um, so this is essentially in this really graph of diameter two. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more general because um, mu can be zero, for example. I mean that sort of. If you have uh, the disjoint union of uh, some clicks of the same size, that's also this uh, strong regular, but it's not this regular graph because it's not connected. But essentially, they are. Essentially, strong regular graph has this regular graph of diameter too. And of course, uh, the most famous one is the Peterson graph. And here's one other one the Peterson graph. Yes. Sorry, my, my, my drawings are not so good anymore. So this is, uh, has 10 vertices and the valency is 3 and there are no lab, there's no triangles. And every two vertices and this is 2 have one common neighbor. And this is in 16, 6 to 2, strong radial graph. So. So there are the t times t grids. For me, t times t grids is really the hemming. Uh, so I always have to think which is where. What did I say? N D or D N? Uh, okay. Yeah. It's t times t grid. And then that is the t times secret and the triangular graph is really the sums in n2 you take the two subsets of an n set and, and this is the sums graph 10 to no sorry 5 to m but you take the complement so this is the complement of the sums in 5 to so so it is t times secret yes T times secret, but uh, for us, uh, you have to be a little bit careful. You may be a little bit confused that for us, uh, we mean in grid, everybody is also to everybody else in the same. Okay. Yeah, how do I? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's slightly different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you are familiar, I mean, if you're Planar graphs or something that, yeah, yeah, that is a different t times secret than here, what we mean here. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Confusing. Okay, so everybody, I think in the audience knows what is t connected. Uh, you remove the t. And uh, so, so Brouwer and Messner in 1985 and Brouwer and myself in 2010. So Brouwer method showed that the strong radial graphs are k-connected and the only way you disconnect it with k vertices is 
the neighborhood of a vertex and similar you can do that for this trailing graph in general um, so that's essentially the same kind of result but uh, for this um, for Brouwer and Messner the most difficult was the one with the small cycle value minus 2 and for this result the lower the diameter the more difficult and so diameter 3 was the most difficult uh, la last of the diameter although it sounds more difficult it is easier Hmm? Okay, in the assumption. Okay, and K regular graph, okay, with fantasy oh. K. Uh, okay. This the is regular K regular graph. Yeah, this regular graph is a K has a fantasy K. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have said this, yes. Thank you. So um 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 question of Andres Bauer last uh, August. So you take this relic graph, yes, and now you fix the vertex vex, and now you let the, you want to go far away from a vertex, and the, the question is when is it still connected? Um, we have very few examples where gamma d is not connected, and the reason why they are not connected is because a, a d is zero, there are no edges at all. That's essentially the only example we know where gamma d of x is not connected. So Andres Bauer asks, what is the maximal i so that gamma i is connected? Or oh, sigma, sorry, sigma i of x is connected. Yeah, what, what can you say in general of this question? So that is what I will, you can think about it, how can you do this? So. So I cannot be more than about half the diameter because if you have uh, an antipodal co three cover which means antipodal means what we mean by antipodal is that being on maximum distance is an equivalence relation. Yeah, of course you have to symmetrize it. I mean, being on maximum distance or uh, distance zero is an equivalence relation. That is what we mean by antipodal. So that's slightly different than in graph theory in general. But here we allow that more vertices are at distance d from one fixed vertex. But those which are distance d, they are always uh, between them, uh, are only distance d and zero occurring. And there are several examples which are three covers, so you cannot do better than this. And the question is, can you do better? Uh, is this, what, can you prove that this is really the answer? And I will talk about that later. Okay, if I have time. If. Okay, so then I will now look at an, an other conjecture by Andres Bauer. Concerning a modification of the k-connectivity, um, so what you want is now so what you want, you want to remove vertices so you take an you want you, have, you want to remove, uh, this is my set S I want to remove this and then all the connect components, all the remaining components have at least two vertices. They are the components, there are no isolated vertex. That's what I mean to say. And so sometimes you cannot have uh, this kind of thing. If I take a quadrangle, yes, then the only way to disconnect this graph is by taking this set. Uh, but then all the connect components 
are of size 1. So, so in this case we say that kappa 2 is infinity. Uh, and otherwise we call it, the, if that number, if you, I can remove it since so that, then, uh, then I will look at the minimal size. And otherwise I, I will call it infinity. And what is kappa 2 in general? So, but we know that if I look at the edge, then how many neighbors is it? Lambda, those ones, and and then the k minus lambda minus one here. That's our only I say is to x and kappa minus one minus lambda minus one here. So, so if I remove this number first, this is as two k minus two minus lambda. And so that seems to be a good candidate to remove. Then you get one of size two, and the rest probably is uh, for probably has no isolated vertex. Hmm? So so that is what Andre Barber thought. So this means all connected components have size at least two. Yes. All the remaining, yes. Yes. So I, th so that's what I say. An obvious candidate is just uh, the neighbors of an edge, and that has the two k minus two minus lambda. And Andre Power conjectured that this is really the smallest you can do. And I already said that I will have some counterexamples, so this is in general not true. Maybe you can already find some counterexamples. Because I have already the graphs with our counterexamples. So, so what shall we do? Hmm. So let's look at the triangular graph Tn. So what are the vertices? They are the subsets A, B, in, in, and choose to eh? this one to n choose to n. So if I look at the set 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. That's a triangle. Yes. Look at the neighbors of this set. How many are there? What, how many? Can somebody, that's what should be D, should have an either a 1 or a 2 or a 3, because most people say to at least one of them. So this may be 1a, 2a, and 3a, where a is at least 4, yes. And then the rest, the rest. So how many are there? There is, what is this number? This number is 3 times n minus 3, huh? Yeah? What's the definition of the triangular graph? Triangular graph is the two subsets of this. So, or the vertex set. That's the vertex. P is 1n, which is 2, and a, b, is I say, to a prime b prime if a, b, and a prime b has gone at 1. They intersect in exactly one, the two subsets. Yeah, so this uh, change with them because they have exactly one. So this is a triangle, and the neighbors of this three vertices are elements of this form, either 1a or 2a or 3a. Mm? Because one. So this size is 3n minus 3. And the rest, what is this? That is really, really, this is t and minus 3 because this is uh, all 
phi is n minus phi choose to a eh? okay so so this is t n minus phi so okay so now I have to what is what is lambda in this case what was lambda again so what is k is and lambda is what was it again uh, k is uh, k is 2 times n minus 2 because 1 2 you either that's a 1 or a 2 as a neighbor so that's 2 times n minus 2 and if I look at these two Oh, I see. If I look at 1, 2 and 1, 3, they are associations. So these are... Okay, what is this? Uh, lambda is 1, 2, 1, 3, then either there's a 1, so that is n minus 3, but also 2, 3, so that is n minus 2, is correct. Did I make a mistake? 1... Oh no, I'm sorry. Tell us what you're doing, while you're doing it. Ah, okay. I will, yeah. I will try to calculate the lambda and... Uh, did I make a mistake? Yes. So I'm trying to calculate the fantasy. Yeah. The fantasy is minus two three, times... Right? Hmm. N minus three, yes. Is N minus three? And did I make a mistake? I will... Must one A, right? One A, and that's N minus four plus one A, N minus three. Yes. Yes. So now I have to calculate what is. Uh, so now I have to to calculate what k two k minus two minus lambda is. That is four and minus two minus two minus and minus three. And somebody can minus n minus three, and that is three and minus seven. Three and minus eight. I hope that I huh? minus seven. Minus seven. Minus eight. <laughs> minus seven should be minus eight. Where did I make my mistake? So there is uh, some mistake. Um, this should be one more than this. So, oh. Oh. Lambda, lambda, maybe. lambda. So lambda is. Um. Yeah, this is n minus three plus one is n minus two. <sighs> yeah, yes. I should learn to calculate. No. Yeah, so minus eight. So that is bigger than this. Hmm? I mean, you, you can also easily convince yourself the two, three is a common neighbor of them, and that's not there. So, yeah. Okay, so so the Wengler graphs give a counterexample if n is at least six. So. So Tn is a counterexample. If n is at least six. For n is five, yeah, this is just an H D two, yes. Okay, so that is what I already did. I did this on Blackboard. That is the force for the triangular graph with m at least 6. Um, but then there's a question, can you classify all counterexamples for this conjecture? Um, I will try to comment that on later. So this is the counterexample I put already on the blackboard. Okay, then you can calculate uh, the 
kappa 2 or TM in general and you and you can prove that this is the only way you can get a counterexample and that is so okay okay so uh, maybe I should not do this so also okay maybe I should talk about symplectic graphs okay symplectic graphs are defined in this way so yes um, so you take a 2R by 2R matrix with on this block diagonal with on the, the, on the it's a block diagonal matrix so so this is this minus one and then CO1 minus one CO and so on CO1 minus one CO and then you say you have this inner product yes you have the AC inner product if they they have okay oh I see I see um Oh, I made a mistake, okay. Okay. I probably, what I made, okay. Um, in general, you can define the symplectic graph for any Q prime power, but uh, I think I, in this case, I really want the Q is in power of two. So, um, so otherwise I should say here not equal to zero or, or yeah, you have to be worried about that sort of things. So I think I made a mistake. I, I really want that Q is a power of two here. An even power of a power of two. Um, so I don't know why I did this for channel Q. I'm sorry. And then you can easily show that uh, this no that this symplectic um, strong hair graph is and has these parameters. Um, I will not calculate that today, but um, and you can also calculate the parameter, the value of two k minus lambda minus two. That's a very easy exercise. But then. But for symplectic graphs, you can find sets uh, of size, this size, which remove or disconnect um, the symplectic graph into comp components in which each component has size at least two. Um, So if, if you believe me, that, then this difference can be as large as you want. Eh? As long as Q is to the power, I mean Q is in prime and power of two. And then if you take Q is to the power 100, then, then the difference is to the power 100, eh? about. So that difference can you be at last as you want. So um, this means that um, the kappa, the kappa two and and the two k minus two minus lambda have really are really kind of independent numbers. Um, how do you make this counterexample? You take uh, two vertices which are adjacent and then you take the set of projective points in the subspace penned by x and y and then if you take that as your uh, your first set and then you take the neighbors of this set and you remove the neighbors of this set then you get a counterexample then that gives you that gives you a size so you take a is a, uh, you can easily see that this has size q plus two, or two q plus one and then you look at the, the set of neighbors and that has this size that's easy calculations that's not difficult <coughs> and and then if you look at the the similar situation that's as here happens the if you look at the the rest the set of the non-neighbors 
uh, then that forms an, an, an symplectic graph on one dim of that with two dimension lower. Huh? Mm. So this shows that the kappa 2 is the most this number and you can show that this is the only way you can disconnect it with this size. Okay, so, but then uh, we talked with Andries Bauer about this result and and he said, yeah, but yeah, we should look at uh, some result by uh, by shoot of strong graph it has a co-triangular matrix co-triangular um, property and then in August last last year Jonathan Hall pointed out that he looked at something called the copolar graphs and generalization of the co-triangular uh, property and he classi classified them under some mild conditions yeah you need an uh, if you don't have these mild conditions, you cannot really classify them. They, you can, um, so you need some regularity kind of conditions. That is the mild conditions. Um, okay. Um, here I call it the copolar graph. Uh, but um, so what we really w look at is. What Sean Zohar looked the copolar graphs that are the complements what we are looking at. So, um, so yeah, it's a little bit uh, confusing here. The polar and this is copolar graphs. Uh, somehow the polar property has a copolar graphs or something. Uh, I mean, some strange thing happens. Uh, I don't really understand why they have this strange kind of confusing. Um, terminology but so what you do is what is ID is I don't know if does everybody know here what is in partial linear space so what we have is a partial linear space so we have X and L so these are the points and these are the lines and what we don't want is L1 and L2 and P1 and P2 with intersecting two points two lines don't intersect in two points this is what we don't want and that is then is called a partial linear space sorry the elements of L are subsets of X is <coughs> uh, officially, what you really do is, yes, uh, what you do really, you say you uh, have an instance relation between the points and lines. Uh, if you want to uh, really, I should have really put an instance relation here, but so in principle we can consider the points on the line, yes. Um, we can consider the lines as subsets of the points, yes. That's how I think. And usually we say they are partially in a space. Um, and we say it is of order ST if every like has S plus one point and every Point lies on T plus one line. So to every point there are exactly T plus one line go to every point. So that is where we need this of order ST. Yes. This one. And now what we want is this has this strange property. If I take a line you know, line L, and then I look and point. So I consider this. I can consider this as a point set. Now I can take this is my one set, and now I take a, a point outside uh, the line. But so what this one is either uh, it has all 
S. So S, these are S points. Or we have that this line, and then there's no, there's no line. So what I mean by collinear is there is a line. So every S points, okay. So I should say what is X and Y are collinear if there exists a line L to X and Y. Yes, so they are uh, collinear if they are on the same, on one line. And now what I want is and the, co the polar property is if I have a look somebody outside my line, then either it has S vertices where it's collinear width or zero vertices or points on the line that is collinear width. And now it's easy to see that that the neighborhood of such a line gives you a very small set. Yes. Um, so if you have this this polar property, if you have this, if if it is a point graph of a linear space, so that this property holds, then you you have an and candidate counterexample because if I look at two vertices here, yes, the neighbors, if I say here, or maybe I should have done a new line. Um, so if I look at two, say here, uh, P1 and P2, Then all the vertices which are on the uh, we are adjacent to one which are collinear with at least one vertex on the line are collinear with at least one of P1 and P2 because there are exactly S plus one points on this line. Yeah? So everybody who in point that has S uh, points a point outside this line that has S points collinear with uh, this vertex of point X must be collinear with at least one of P1 and P2. That shows that um, the neighborhood here that is a most, uh, you can easily calculate how much this is. Um, uh, that is uh, 2k minus 2 minus lambda but now we have to uh, look at the minus the number of vertices or the number of points on the line minus 2 eh? minus s minus 1 yes because all the points on the lines are uh, I say to P1 and P2 so so you see that the neighborhood has cardinality 2k minus 2 minus lambda minus s minus 1 so as long as, uh, as, as if I remove the neighborhood of this line then this gives usually in counterexample unless in the remaining part there is an isolated vertex, yes? So that is, so I mean if you think a little bit about line and then you see that you have to have this and so unless there is an, an isolated vertex on the, the non, the, the points non-collinear with this line the, unless that situation occurs, you always have a counterexample. Um, so that is what I say. So they are potential counterexamples. And he, 
uh, John Tor classified the strong aircraft satisfying this polar uh, property and he found okay he found that you get the triangular graph, the simple graphs and the orthogonal graph of, of uh, sine plus and minus uh, for and uh, if you look at the vector space of even dimension there are all two different um, non dimensional bilinear forms and one is the plus and the other one is the minus there are exactly two I always get confused what are the names uh, the, the, the probably the, the elliptic and 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 hyperbolic I guess yeah. The parabolic is probably for odd dimension, I think. Um, okay, but then Hans Kuipers, uh, after John de Hall, we met also Hans Kuipers there, and he said, yeah, yeah, but you, there is also something called the delta property. Yes, now what you do, now we had for the polar property zero or s, but uh, for the delta property, you also allow f plus 1. All of, uh, and point outside the line is collinear with all the points on the line. Okay, that's slightly more general than the polar property. But again, you see that you have the similar number of neighbors of a line if you have this situation. So we have again potential. Uh, okay. Uh, count examples and and then you can. There are things called generalized quadrangles, and that is yes. Um, um, okay, I will not. But you. Uh, I mean, I think that I will mainly say. Um, so you can define something that is called regular uh, regular pair of non adjacent points, and uh, that is some geometric property. Uh, I will not explain today what this exactly means uh, because we have not much time. Um, but it means, but what you can do is that that, that if it has that every pair of points is regular, then the complement of the strong of the generalized quadrangle is the point graph of a delta space. And what you take as your lines is yeah you have here k t plus one, t plus one, you take the t plus one. The, the, that's the privatization of two uh, of two sets of size t plus one. If I take that all this the t plus one sets I get in this way. Then, uh, if I take that as uh, my lines, then I get a delta <coughs> space, and then you can, and then you get also counterexample. So there are many counterexamples in this way. Um, but you don't need, um, you don't need really all those. If you have only one pair of non adjacent points which are regular. Then, then, then you get already a count example. So, um, but those generalized quadrangles, generalized quadrangles, with all pairs of points are regular, are not classified. So, and all um, there's not not that much known about generalized quadrangles with those properties, uh, with pair of points regular or not. So I already said this. Um, okay, then I will say a little bit about some positive results. Um, we say it is okay if it's the kappa two is what we think it is. Um, if the number of vertices is very close to two k minus lambda, then it is okay. That is what it says. Uh, essentially, because then kappa two is always. Uh, infinity. 
And then uh, the next lemma is uh, by Willem Hamers. Um, he showed that if you have a disconnect set in, in a K regular graph with, uh, with positive eigenvalues theta 1 and the, all the eigenvalues here, then the size of the um, so what is A and B? So, so what you want is if okay, okay. So if you take yeah. So if this has size A and this size S and that says B, then the size of S depends on the size, the product of the size from A B times something about the the the, the eigenvalues, uh, and this is quite a good bound. Um, so with this kind of um, uh, bound, you can sometimes prove that the kappa two should be large. Yes, that is if one of the sizes. If a time, I mean, if a is large, or if you may assume without loss of energy that a is smaller than b, and if this is, um, if a is a small, uh, but larger than two, then a times b is too large, and therefore you get that s is large. So that with that sort of argument, you get that, that sort of you can show that, um, and then you show that this kind of, uh, you can prove that uh, for strong AI graphs this is direct uh, a consequence and then you can show if kappa I, uh, k is the fancy is at least 2 lambda plus 1 and lambda minus mu in absolute value is at most 1 then you can show it is okay um, big question is when whether I can remove this part so Okay, um, okay, so we could show that many uh, strong aircraft are okay. So these are. <coughs> so for T is 4, please find the counterexample of the semi counterexample yourself. It's very easy, you take two quadrangles here, quadrangle, quadrangle, then the, re the other two are also two quadrangles. Yes? Uh, so, so, so I already said that maybe it is true if the strong head graph is sparse, if k is at least two lambda, or at least two lambda plus one. And that, uh, that conjecture is true. Then that is a, an open conjecture, an op no open question for us. Um, and then we have the question whether this is also true for. This is really gas, and we think that it is mainly true for this is really gas, uh, for diameter at least three, maybe some diameter three examples are counterexamples, but that I would be very surprised if there are counterexamples. I think I will stop here because otherwise yeah, it's already five o'clock, I guess. Okay, thank you for your attention. Yeah, so.